right, Garrett, we're on the seventh hole. Uh, dog leg left here. Uh, you got driver in your hand. Walk me through kind of why you would hit driver or what your thoughts are on this whole plane. Yeah. Um, I mean, playing this hole before, I've definitely taken different clubs off the team, but with, with my driver, I feel like I make the game the best advantage with it. Um, I feel like I can spot kind of around this corner again. I, I, I know where the only zone is, but it's just kind of taking, you know, effectively hitting the shot. But yeah, I think driver kind of draw it around this corner, um, which is kind of helping me and kind of makes me want to take more that way. I think if I even hit a straight one, Yeah, and I would say, you know, when you're when you're selecting a club off the tee too, it's not to make our focus, you know, where's the trouble, but it's also to be cognizant of if I miss, where am I okay to be? So like you pointed, like, hey, if I hit it straight, it doesn't really draw. There's some help in wind and stuff like that. And I think this club for you, it's not going to put you in trouble outside of the fairway over there. So, yeah. And I think, obviously, if you hit it just perfect, you're going to be sitting probably around 100 yards in on this hole. So. Yeah. If, uh, if you're feeling like that's the club and you're confident in that, then that's one of the biggest things, making sure you're confident in your club selection and move from there. Same thing we've been doing all day, stick to your routine, yeah. and then go ahead and execute. Yeah, I definitely think too, I mean, if I was playing poorly throughout this round or poorly during a round, like my club selection, especially with like the driver, because it's your longest, most missable club, sure. I would take, like if I was not hitting my driver well, I wouldn't take that off the tee, right? Because this takes a shot that you have to uh, commit to and hit it, so if I'm not confident in my driver, then I grab like a seven iron or like a four iron. It's like, okay, let me get deeper down the middle. Right. Um, but it's definitely like the confidence I have with my club. That's where I'm going to see, that's going to be my kind of my decision making as I play through it, especially off the tee, right? Especially on a par four, like you don't need to curve at the corner. You don't need to curve it around the corner. It's a cool to do, yes. But sure. by putting something out there 210 in the middle of the pair, that's going to be just right. as good as pulling off a shot. Absolutely. I think decision making it kind of comes into confidence too. I mean, also course management as well. Knowing the course, I know kind of where it is. And if I can draw in the dirt, I would know how far that corner is covered. So sure. I definitely take the forearm and to just put me out in the middle. Um, right. Right, keep that further course. I know the course. It's decision making is a big thing. Yeah, that's it's funny you mentioned that because like when you talk about course management, it's always going to be subjective to the course you play and if you've played it before. So yeah. you know. Hey, you have memories that resonate and, you know, club selections at those points that were either successful or not successful. Whereas sometimes when you play a course and you have no, no memories of it whatsoever, mm -hmm. it, it kind of helps narrow down what club selection you need to go with in, in terms of scoring and getting around the golf course. It makes yeah. it a little bit easier too. So. No, I mean, course knowledge and course management, I think, go hand in hand. I mean, the more knowledge you have about the course, the better you can manage it. And vice versa, if you don't have any knowledge of the course, then you kind of got to play everything conservative and try to put the ball in the middle. Yep. But all right, let's, uh, let's, let's see it. Let's see